Hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial. Today we're gonna walk through installing one of my plugins and I'm just gonna show you all the features that you get if you purchase this plugin. You can go over to my website, you can get it there. Today we're just gonna walk you through how the installation works and everything you can do with it. So let's jump in right now. All right, so let's talk about who can use this plugin. Anyone on a Squarespace 7.0 or Squarespace 7.1 website. Anywhere where you can add blocks, you can use this plugin. You can add tabs wherever you can add blocks. Second, this works on personal plans and business plans. If you're on the personal plan, you'll need to use a little bit different of a setup. You have to use markdown blocks instead of the code blocks we're using today. However, everything else works the exact same. Okay, with that set up, let's walk through an installation, just a base installation of just a normal tabs section. So here is the installation page that you would get access to after you purchase. We have all of our items over here on the right. You can just scroll through our navigation there. Um, and here is the website that I'm gonna be building my tabs on. You can see we have this locations page right here and I got these five locations, just right one right on top of the other. These are all little neighborhoods in Atlanta, which is where I'm from. Uh, and I just wanna put each one of these into a tab. I don't really want these stacked right on top of each other. I want these into a tab. So let's build that. Over on my installation page, you'll see down here at the usage. Um, if you're just watching this video thinking you can just get this set up, it won't work. There is up here on the installation tab, there's a couple pieces of code you need to just copy and paste onto your website, page header, code injection area. You have to do that first for any of this else, else to work. However, that just takes five seconds. You just go up there and paste it in, very simple. Once you've done that, you can add these bits. So I'm just gonna put this into a code block wherever I want a tab. And we'll put as many code blocks as we need tabs. So I'll just show you what this means. I'm just gonna copy this code over on our website. I want my tabs to be right up here. So I'm gonna hit edit. I'm gonna add a code block right above. And I'm gonna paste this code in it. So that is now we are getting started. However, you see, this isn't spanning the entire width of the content of where I want my tab. So I'm gonna pull this up and make sure the insertion point is going all the way across like that. So there we go. Now the spacer block is under it. That's where I want. So this would be one tab. Anything under it will become a tab, but I want five tabs. And I also want this first one to be the name of the city. So I'm going to double click into here and change the name here, Dunwoody. So this is my first tab named Dunwoody. Now I want four more tabs with Marietta, Buckhead, Grant Park, and I guess another Grant Park for her demo purposes. Uh, so I'm just gonna copy this code and I'm gonna add as many code blocks as I want tabs. So I'm gonna add five more code blocks, pasting in that code and we'll just change this Marietta as we go. So that's my next one. Uh, the next code block is going to be, what is it? A Buckhead, so I'll change this to Buckhead. We'll do this, Buckhead. Our next code block is gonna be Grant Park. We'll call this Grant Park. And I guess our last one, I'll call it Grant Park 2 because apparently we have two locations within Grant Park. So I'll just call this Grant Park 2. Grant Park 2. Now we need to do one final thing. We need to close out our tab. So over on the installation page, there's one more block right here. So just copy this where it says WM tabs end. Copy that and under our last tab, add another code block and just paste that in. You don't need to change anything else. So here are our five tabs. Now let's put the content in between each one of these code blocks. So we have tab start, all the content, next tab start, all the content. That's what we're gonna do. So I need to click and drag my content up in between. Watch that insertion point, that blue line insertion point. Make sure it's between the two code blocks uh, of where I want it to be. So now there's my, my text. I'm gonna move my uh, map up there. It looks like I had a spacer block over here on the right side. Again, make sure all of our tabs start blocks right here. They're still going full width uh, as where we want the, the content to be. So there we go, this is our first tab. Now let's do that for our Marietta tab. 
I'm gonna drag our content up in between there. Very simple, you can add more blocks within here if you want, I already had the content on the page, but you can easily just add another block, like a spacer block or a video block or a button block, you can add whatever else you want in there. Okay, so I'm now gonna do this for the rest of my content on here, and I'll be back here in just a second. All right, I've completed it. Let me walk you through all me moving all those blocks between our tab. You see right here, we have a code block stretching the full width of where we want our tab to be. And then under it, we have all the content directly underneath this code block where our tab start is of the content for this Dunwoody tab. Right under that, we have another tab start block, our Marietta, again, with the blocks right under it. Then we have Buckhead under that, more code blocks, Grant Park under that, more code blocks in Grant Park 2. And finally, we have under our last tab, under the, the content for our last tab, we have our tabs group end block with our WM tabs end. So now, what the, why we need this ending tab, so we can put other content on our page. We don't want the subscribe box within our tab, so that's why we need to close it out right here. That's all you need to do. Now you just hit done save, and it'll automatically format into these tabs right here. And now you got this nice little tabs element that jumps around like this, so you can do whatever you want. So that is the base installation. You don't need to do anything else besides that to get this working. However, I do have some other layouts and some styles that I wanna show you if you want to customize this a little bit more. So stick around for that. All right, so let's first talk about customizing the layout of our Squarespace website. So there are a couple options over here. We have this layout option. We also have our tabs button, which allows you to adjust the tab buttons on your website. So over here on our tab button style, style presets, right here, here's the default where you have this line sort of jumping back and forth like this. Our indicator line, that's pretty cool. That's kind of a standard uh, style out there. But you can also do this folder style right here where these look like folders. Uh, and we also have this button style if you just want buttons within the element. So let's just say we want these buttons right here or let's go with folders, how about? So I just click on this folders over here and here is some CSS right below. You just copy that, you go over to your website, you go to your design custom CSS area and just paste it right in there and it'll automatically reformat. All right, so let's show you some other options over here. I'm gonna just delete that code from in here. Uh, go back to our website. We have our tab alignment, so you can adjust the alignment if you'd like um, to start. You can have all your buttons be at the start there. They can be at the, they can center up like that. They can be at the end. You can play around with any of that. Again, just copy and paste this code. What if we wanted them right there at the beginning? Copy start again in our custom CSS area, just hit paste. It'll just put them right there at the beginning, however you want. And how does this look on mobile? Well, it looks pretty good. It just, you have this little scrolly indicator that just shows you you got more elements and it just scrolls as you jump between. It'll just scroll to the next item and show the others that aren't in view. Uh, let's also look at installing a vertical tabs. I know this is very common uh, feature, very common request from people. So I'm gonna go down here to vertical tabs. Um, it's very simple. You just put this data attribute right here, data layout equals vertical, into the starting tab element right here. So I'm just gonna copy this. I'm not gonna copy this entire block because I already have the first tab, but I'm just gonna copy that code, go back to our website, hit edit, and then in our first block right here, I'm just gonna add this attribute before our closing tag right here. Before we close out right there, I'm gonna add our data layout equals vertical. Hit done, save. And it'll default to our vertical layout like this. So that is pretty darn cool. Um, another thing that people have wanted is sort of changing these elements. How do you change tabs on hover? instead of on click. Well, that's another thing we have down here. So in our advanced area, open tabs on hover, uh, you do the same thing. So you have this data event, instead of data layout, we have data event. You just copy that and then on hover, you just paste it right back into our first element right there. So we have data layout vertical, and then we also have data event on hover. So I'm gonna hit done save. 
and you'll see as I just hover over these other items, it just, I don't need to click. It just moves between them automatically. So pretty cool. All right, let's talk about adjusting the colors. So I'm gonna go up here to our custom colors and fonts area within our tabs button. And I'm just gonna hit copy. And just a quick note, as I evolve and grow this plugin, this main nav, this side nav might look a little different. So just be aware of that. All right, so let's copy this code and paste it into our custom CSS area. And I'm actually gonna move this back. Let's hit edit. Let's just go back to our, our normal with not data layout, our normal tabs, no hover. Uh, let's just go back to this. So as you paste this in, these are all just the default. This is just the default layout. So nothing is gonna change as you paste this in. But let's just talk about some of these items. Uh, so our box shadow, notice there's a little shadow around our, our tabs element. We can remove that totally by removing our, our box shadow, just changing the value here to initial, changing that back to initial and it's gone. Or you could make it tab shadow uh, low and it'll be a lower shadow or you can do tab shadow high. That'll be a really high shadow. Uh, let's just go with low for now, just for something a little different. And we have our nav background element. So this is our background right up here of our nav nav guy right there. Uh, maybe we want this to be uh, maybe we want this to be black, right? And we'll change the text color to uh, maybe green or something. So in our nav button styles, uh, the default color is current color, but maybe we want this to be uh, uh, light green. How about that? There we go. That's kind of cool. Uh, but our active tab isn't covered. Well, down here we have our active, our hover states and our active states. So let's change the colors on these again as well to light green. There we go. Light green. There it is. Uh, so as we hover over it, it's light green as well. And let's also change our indicators down here. Background is black. No, I don't want that. Let's do background white. Uh, or the indicator track, which is the long track that runs across. Uh, we'll change this to white. And then we'll change the indicator color to light green as well. So there we go. So and it's it's there, but the, we have an opacity of 0.25. So let's up that opacity of the background color. So there we go. That's kind of cool. Now it's sort of hovering between. The contrast isn't very good. I hope you're able to see that. Um, so there we go. That's how you play around with that. We have some nav buttons. We can change the font family, the font weight. Maybe we want the font weight of all this to be. A little bit larger, maybe 700, and maybe uh, you know one pixel spread. We'll sort of spread out the words a little bit, so that kind of works. Um, and then our our background here, we want the panels background also to be black as well. Um, oh, well, I guess our text that's not really going to work with the text we have here. Um, so what I can do is hit edit, and we'll just change the background of our section, our colors. Change it to a darker section. So now we have this light white text in here and that pulls from the section and this, let's see, there we go. So now we have a nice looking little custom tabs component. Okay, so there we go. That's how you customize the colors a little bit. Let me know if you have any other questions about this. Uh, and let's see what's next, advanced customizations. Okay, let's move on to that. All right, so let's check out some of our advanced stuff. So we've already talked about this open tab on hover. I also have uh, some instructions if you wanna self host the code on your website, if you're comfortable jumping into that. Uh, we can also open tabs based on a URL parameter. So let's take a look at that down here. Uh, you just need to give a tab an ID and then you can use a URL parameter, which is anything at the end of a URL after a question mark. Uh, with the WM tabs equal to whatever that ID is and it'll open it up. So let's walk through an example right here. So over on my website, uh, I have added in, hit edit. Uh, let's say down here on my, my Buckhead tab, I've added in an ID equal to Buckhead. You can make this whatever, this bu between quotes, you can make that variable in equal to whatever. Uh, but that ID equals Buckhead. Now if I go over to my website, if I just do question mark WM tabs equals, this has to be the same. So anything after your question mark, uh, we'll just say Buckhead, Buckhead. If you just have it equal to that, if you link out to this URL, it'll automatically open the Buckhead tab. So that's a fun little uh, 
thing you might have use for on your website. I don't really know. Uh, and then down here we have I have uh, the the breakdown of the HTML markup. If you want to jump into if you're curious about how the HTML is structured and you have any use for that, here is what it looks like. I got some explanations of how all that works. And I also have sort of a, a CSS template if you want to be able to customize anything within here and you're comfortable with CSS. Uh, there's not much support I can do with this just because every sort of every website's different, uh, but this gives a lot of the initial layout structures, initial values uh, for what this plugin does. So you can copy that and put this into your custom CSS area, and then you can adjust some more things. So these are your default, uh, the, the colorings that we changed. So let's move this back to our, our default colors that we had, which was white there. Um, so you, you can change anything from like the, the spacing within our article here. So maybe we want padding, maybe we want like a lot of padding, maybe 54 pixels of padding within our tab section. So you can adjust stuff like that. Um, again, more stuff with our colors. We have our nav indicators. If we want to remove our nav indicators, just, just turn the display values to none, then they wouldn't be there anymore. There's there's just a lot. And then here's some default tablet and meet mobile styles if you want to paste some code in there. Uh, so that's just some stuff you can do if you want to customize it a little bit further. Okay, so I think that has gone over everything I wanted to cover in this video. Let me know if you have any other questions about this. I hope you like this plugin. I hope you get it and can find a use for it. Um, and if not, just keep building tabs however you want. That's totally fine as well. So let me know if you have any questions and I hope you have a fantastic day.